Okay. Hey guys, happy splasher here. Good morning. It is 714 2021. Right now we are going to do some pit and then some divine arena and then some league. So let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, uh, I checked the news before and I saw that they have the world event, the details for the world event. Uh, whoops, not here. It's not in the news. It's in the events. Sorry. <laughs> So as you can see here, the world event is going to start on Friday on 716, which is in two days. Uh, it's called Fempire, and you'll have three heroes that you're looking for. So there's the Circuit Senscorp, the Aphrodite, and the Red Woman. Uh, don't think they have it uh, introduced here. I'll check the actual news and see if they have those units. They do not. So let's just look at them in our inventory here. So we'll go to our squad. So Sense Circuit, which is a nature unit, a Aphrodite, and a Red Woman. So let's filter for melee, and then nature, and take a look at that Sense Scorpion. That Sense Scorpion here has three skills. So whenever it attacks the Warlord, it will deal damage to another unit. Uh, whenever a unit appears, it gives toxin to two other units on their side of the field. Can't happen to buildings. And then whenever any unit dies except a building, this unit will gain a regeneration. So pretty big tank unit. It deals some extra damage over here and then lowers the attack of other units. All right. Uh, we have the Aphrodite, which is a ranged nature. Oh, sorry, ranged order unit. Uh, take a look. Where is Aphrodite? Aphrodite is... Oh, you know, wait. She's, she's not in my deck. Oh, here she is. So Aphrodite has a couple skills. So at the end of the turn, it deals damage to their Warlord based upon the health of one of our units. At the beginning of the turn, it heals one of our units for a large amount of health. And then at the end of the turn, it gives two health pentagrams on our side. So kind of cool over there. All right, the third unit is the Red Woman, which is a ranged chaos unit. Uh, she is right here. So she has a couple of skills. So begin before she attacks, she gives vampirism to all units on your side of the field. Whenever vampirism triggers on your side of the field, it will deal damage to their warlord, the opponent's warlord. And then when this unit dies, it gives plus attack to all units with vampirism. So kind of cool over there. All right. So that was an intro of the units that you'll see on the world event this Friday. Uh, let us now go to pit. We have our Warlord ready, we have this Pirate Warlord ready, and we have our pet already set up. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to hold off on the guild bonuses for the, what do you call, uh, the attacks. So right now we just have our gold boost and our chest boost, but everything else is off for now. If it starts to get a little more difficult, then we'll start activating our guild bonuses. All right, let's go to the pits. All right, we have, these two bosses to do right now. So we have a Her Koshmar and the Hia Severus as a legendary chest for the Sev Severus and a couple of epics for the Her Koshmar. So let's check out the Her Koshmar skills. All right. Whenever one of their units dies, it will gain a plus attack to another unit on their side. On the fourth turn, we'll give Reborn to all of their units. And then on the sixth turn, we'll give all our units a skill. So at the beginning of the turn, we'll deal damage to us to damage to each one of our units for each uh, unit around it. So we're going to try and kill their units as quickly as possible before they get reborn, and then make sure our units are as far away from possible so that we don't take extra damage to their units. And then they'll get an attack boost, so we'll be aware of that. All right, let's go. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna do our pentagrams, and they're in pretty good spots, Kind of in the middle here. Uh, no coverage over here, but that is fine. We'll take care of the units when they come into play. And we're going to hold off on using large attack units until we uh, have units that we're going to kill. So let's start from there. We'll start with a unit here with high health and put it over here. Oh, speed settings are the same now? That's cool. All right. Uh, there was a technical thing last time where they weren't uh, they weren't saving, but it looks like they're starting to save now. So, all right, we summon this unit. Whenever it's attacked, it'll summon an extra copy of itself, some extra damage as well. All right, we're going to shuffle for... No, we're not going to shuffle for here. We will continue with another 
near it. We'll put one over here. And we're just going to let our pentagrams do the work. We know that the copies get summoned in the same lane, so it's actually very good that their unit with, with the extra copies uh, came right down here. All right, so we need to deal with this flight unit with Splash. Going to hold off on this here, and we're going to summon another melee unit to block. Okay, next turn. They're going to get reborn to all of their units, so we'll have to destroy their units as quickly as possible. So we will shuffle for a ranged unit to actually destroy this. The reason why is because the reborn is going to happen first, and then the pentagram damage is going to occur. So we will need to shuffle. All right, then we will do... Just got to do some calculations here, so enough damage on this. We'll pamper some here. All right, so we summon our range unit to just deal some damage so that this won't be reborn. And then, as you saw at the beginning of the turn, it will get reborn here. Which is fine. We still have some coverage along the line with the pentagrams, and we still have our melee units with the high health over here to block for damage. All right, so now that unit's destroyed, we're going to let our pentagrams do the work here. We're going to be summoning our melee units actually over here so that we can still have our summon spot open for the sharks here. Did miss, but then the pentagrams deal the damage here. Now, like I said, we just need to kill this unit uh, with the reborn. All right, so next turn, all of our units will get a skill that will deal damage based upon how many units are around them. So we're going to hold off on doing our summon, and we're going to be placing a unit as far away from possible there. So we'll place one, place one here. Seeing if there are any death triggers there. Nope. So now all of our units are marked. I'm going to see them take a little bit of damage. These units with the high health, they should be fine for now. This unit, probably not so much, but it's okay. We have plenty of shuffles and we still have relatively high amounts of health. So damage, damage, damage. Uh, damage over there. Do the extra damage over there. All right, so we're going to do our summon now. And then, as you see here, it sets the attack of their units to one. And we're going to actually summon our ranged unit over here. All right. Uh, we got some heal at the end because of this unit. Uh, heals units uh, on our side for a little bit of health. So that's going to help out here because we have our high health units. If this unit dies, it's fine because we got it off for our summon. And we can also take damage over there, too. All right, so once again, their unit's going to get reborn. We're going to have to summon another ranged unit to get rid of this. Seeing which one is probably more important. This one is probably more important because it will give reborn to another one of their units. We can kill that. So we're summon our ranged unit over here. And then once again, another reborn. But this is why it's as important to destroy their units as quickly as possible. We could have done that if we rushed one more summon, but that's fine. We have a lot of coverage over here, and we still have our attack boost, and uh, we have our range units. So we should be fine as long as there are not a lot of units down here. All right, we're just going to summon another melee unit down here with the high health. We don't really need to use our shuffles right now unless we need more range units because those are the key things that we're missing right now. So we just need to block for damage and then we're having our units up here deal the damage for us. Okay, just doing some math. See if we can actually get rid of this in one attack. 43, every six. We're actually off by one. That's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, this is fine. We'll just summon our flight unit in order to block for some damage in the lane. As you can see, those extra copies are coming out in play. 
but that is fine. And we got rid of all of them because we had our extra attackers over here, and then we had the skill on this unit that deals damage whenever we heal our units. Uh, which oh, So we'll heal when we attack, and then we'll deal the extra damage to their units. Alright, so we'll have our range unit destroy that, we'll have an attack, and we just have, need to put another range unit, checking out the stats. So when it dies, it gets reborn, and that'll come back with 61 health, so we'll need another range unit with that. We're going to hold off on using this unit because it deals damage to a random order unit, and that could actually be pretty helpful for us. So we're going to hmm, shuffle and see if we can get a bigger range unit. We do. Yeah, yeah this is fine. We'll summon our, our range unit over here. I kind of didn't want to use a legendary to do this, but it's fine. We're going to try and keep up on the pace with our uh, pit attempts. All right, so as you can see, all of our units are now destroyed. Uh, next turn, we're going to do our attack boost for our male units, which are, are pretty much all here. And then we should be good for lethal. All right, I know that they have a death trigger, which is the reborn, but it's not going to matter. Just going to do, let's see. Do some math. Yeah, okay, so it's good there. And we're gonna do one more shuffle to get rid of some trashier units. This one here is the low attack and the low health. And there you go. Alright, uh, as you saw there, the pentagrams from the pirate pretty much helped us out and uh, covered the board with the damage and then we just had our ranged units come out and destroy their units before they reborn we did let them reborn a little bit but that's fine as long as you can keep pace you should be all set all right so the next boss over here let's take a look at their skills so whenever one of their units appears or whenever one of our units appears we'll deal damage to our warlord on the third turn they'll summon a bogey and then on the seventh turn they'll summon two bogeys so we'll be aware that they have extra summons, and then more damage is going to come out whenever a unit comes into play. All right, uh, it's going to be a legendary chest for rewards, so that's cool. Uh, let's go. All right, so once again, first things first, do the pentagrams. And some decent coverage. Got coverage behind the building, which is actually good, because that way we don't have to worry about attacking the building first but we will need to we need to attack the building over here so we'll do that and we'll start with our melee units over here blocking for some damage looks like we have a lot of range units in our squad right now so we're going to give them some extra space so we'll have some damage here and uh, we're going to put this melee unit over and put over here because this line is currently unguarded with the pentagrams. We have the pentagram deal damage and then combat damage over here to destroy that unit. All right, uh, next turn, they're going to be summoning these bogeys. And they have this unit over here. It has reborn and then deals damage to our unit at the beginning of the turn. So not quite enough to destroy that. We will hold off. We're going to wait until that bogey comes out and then do our summon. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are going to... We'll put out some damage over here. We'll block with our melee unit. All right, as you see, that bogey did come out, so that's cool. Uh, it did. Hmm. I didn't get to see what it did. <laughs> it landed on the pentagram here and then was destroyed. So, oh well. We'll take a look when the uh, next ro um, skill rotation occurs. All right, so we have that. All right, we'll do our summons now. And we know for sure that they're going to land here because it's it says random, but it's always within the first row. So we have the damage over there. And then let us summon a range unit. Taking a look at this one here, it has vampirism and then gives an attack boost to units in the line. So nothing really too important as long as we can kill the unit over here. And the pentagram, once again, is going to help us take care of the, the damage. So we got there, there. All right, I'll summon our range units here. 
They have their zombie over here that summons other zombies. But we did get rid of them with the combat damage over here. Still want to deal as much damage so we can get rid of this and then we should be good. This other zombie is not really a big deal. Uh, although it does deal poison whenever it's attacked. So it's a little bit of an issue there. All right, so the damage, the vampirism. Take a look here. So deals damage to our warlord. Uh, deals damage to our units whenever our warlord is attacked. Uh, some damage, damage. All right, next turn, the two bogeys are going to, or one bogey is going to come out and play. So we'll be aware of that. Uh, we'll summon this. Let's just do some math. So 55, 38, one, okay, 90. Yeah, okay. We're going to summon this flight unit to block uh, against this melee unit over here. All right, so the bogey did come out. When the bogey comes out, it deals damage to all units except chaos units. So we're going to want to summon chaos units in order to avoid the damage. All right. And then next turn, they're going to be summoning two more bogeys. Oh, uh, boy. Let's see here. We'll summon our... We do want to get rid of this unit because it does these extra summons. So we'll just do our... And they attack over there. Okay, the two bogeys did come up, dealing damage to all of our units. Still want to get rid of this because of those extra summons whenever we attack them. Okay. Uh, Summon our range unit over here. And the reason why we're summoning this range unit is so that we can get enough damage to kill this in one go. Unfortunately, we're not because of that extra summon, as I mentioned. But uh, this unit skill here to deal, uh, give us health whenever one of their units dies is actually going to help us out because of those extra summons. All right, so as you can see, we're taking a little bit of extra damage from those summons over there. We'll hold off on this. Because of how these melee units are set up, this melee unit can't attack. So we just need to deal with this. Uh, we're going to be summoning... I'll summon this unit over here. We, we could potentially summon this unit, but we don't need its death trigger to help us out. We just need to actually just have a unit for block. This unit also deals damage to another unit whenever it attacks, so that's why we can get some extra damage over there. Uh, next turn, we're going to summon a ranged unit to avoid this unit's skill of transforming a melee unit into a zombie. Unless something like that happens. All right, we are starting to lose the board a little bit here, so we'll need to find a way to get back. Damage over there, damage over there. Right, we'll hold on. Uh, no. We'll take the damage, summon this melee unit to kill, get some health back, and then kill over here. Also gives us a little bit of protection for our range unit with the health. We're going to be taking some more damage, but again, that is fine. Um, we do have some protection, and we do have that health returning. We're going to need to use our shuffles in order to get rid of this high attacker. They did another one of these guys with the Rotter Summons, which is actually good because now we can get the health back. So we just want to focus our damage over here. Uh, we're going to summon this unit. It has Silence Mail units. And we're going to be placing it over here to also block. This unit has Flight as well, so we'll be able to avoid the damage over here. It was good we just drew into this. This is pretty nice. So now we can actually stop most of the damage coming through. Okay, uh, this unit also deals damage at the beginning of the turn based upon the number of units on our side, so that's why you saw the damage over there. Uh, I'm going to hold off on there, over there. Summon our melee unit over here. All right, the bogey did come into play. Why don't I show gold mine? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, we will do that right right after as as well. Hey, uh, 
I don't know if you you saw. I I did a, a gold. Uh, what do you call it? an ogre deck? It was actually pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, all right. So now we pretty much got rid of all their units. So that here, when it dies, it deals damage to units in the line. So that'll actually end up destroying these. Uh, we're going to continue summoning with chaos units if we can, so that we can avoid the bogey damage. All right. So we'll place this over here. All right, as you saw, the damage came over here. Uh, this unit, whenever oh, whenever one of our units dies, this will get mental shield. So even better for protection. So we got the damage over there, damage over here. Summon our summon this ranged unit over here. It has splash, so we'll deal some damage to destroy these two. Combat damage over here, and then our pentagram damage will destroy this here. So right now, as you can see, the big problem are those bogeys that are coming out and playing and destroying our units. Once we get more chaos units on our side of the field, we'll be much better off. All right, so we got that. Uh, all right, so whenever their warlord is attacked, we'll take damage to our units, so that's fine. Uh, 43, enough of that. All right, yeah. Kind of actually don't want to destroy this. Actually, no, I can't. I can I was thinking this unit would give us um, health to one, but this is good. All right, so you saw another bogey came into play, but they landed on the pentagram, so now they're destroyed. We want to protect this unit because it gives health to our units for every female on our side of the field. So if we get enough females, we can avoid taking that damage altogether. Or we can take the damage, but it won't really matter in terms of calculation. All right. uh, to avoid the extra summon for their units, so we'll do some damage, damage. And yeah, we'll just place our building in front here to block. Place it over here so that we can actually put a melee unit in front. All right, the pentagram is going to take care of that. So just checking for death triggers, which they don't have. And continue with summoning another female unit. And we're summoning it down here for some coverage. And at this point, looks like we have pretty good control of the board. Our units have a lot of health. And so we're just going to start summoning uh, trashier units to get rid of uh, them out of our inventory. Uh, so that unit died. I'm going to continue on and summon another melee unit. Okay, a little bit of health whenever a bogey comes on play because it's a melee unit. Okay. All right, so you uh, know. Sets two of our units' health to one, except buildings. That is fine. We're summoning another unit to block for damage. And then damage and pentagram will destroy this over here. These units are now set to one health. So that means that most likely this might be destroyed. All right, uh, so again, there's a chance that these might be destroyed because of that skill here to deal damage to units. Going to do our melee summon over here just to guard the line. Okay, our unit is still alive, so that's good. And this unit is also chaos, so it won't take that extra damage off of the bogeys. Next turn, a bogey is going to come out into play because of the skill timer here, and then another two more bogeys are going to come up. So we'll keep that in mind. We will do a shuffle here because we don't want to actually get rid of this building. We're going to hold off on using this unit skill. 
Uh, we'll summon a melee unit over here just to get rid of it. And we could have gone for lethal there, but uh, like I said, we do want to just get rid of some of our uh, trashier units. And as you see here, we do have lethal on these two of these lines, so that's good. We're going to do one more shuffle after this turn, and then we should be good. Right, those units did take some damage when they came into play because of this building's skill. Deals damage to units. Uh, lethal over here. Just doing one more shuffle, getting rid of some bad units. And this one out here, we do have lethal in the line over here. All right, so there you go. That was Hia Severus. Took a little longer because of those bogeys coming out every couple of turns. As long as you have chaos units, they won't take damage. And then you'll also be able to uh, start building up the board. So we got a little bit of uh, that over there. Okay, uh, we have two more bosses. Well, we have a couple more bosses again. Uh, they won't open up for another day, but we'll take a look at what their skills are. Uh, we have this Nor Havenclaw. All right, so whenever block triggers on their side, we'll give an attack boost to their units. Every third turn, we'll deal damage to two lines on our side of the field. And then on the sixth turn, we'll deal damage to melee units on our side of the field. So that being the case, realizing that they're going to have units with block, so we'll have to get rid of those. And then we'll have damage on the two random lines, so we're probably going to spread out our units. I, I always forget what the good strategy is for this particular skill. And then this one here uh, for damage to melee, so we're going to avoid summoning melee units if we can. Otherwise, we'll have to summon them, but units with high health. All right, let's take a look at the other boss that we're going to have open. So we have Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane does end of turn, gives plus attack to women on their side of the field. On the fourth turn, we'll give evasion to their units. And then on the sixth turn, kills male units on our side of the field. So that being the case, we know that they're going to have attack boost. We know that they're going to have evasion, so we're going to get rid of their units by the fourth turn. And then on the sixth turn, we need to make sure we have as few male units on our side of the field. All right, uh, so that that for pits looks like some somebody requested for gold mine gold mine is currently not going to happen for at least another two hours so we'll have to check back in for tomorrow i'll i'll hold the gold mine uh for the stream tomorrow all right uh next thing is over here I'm gonna check out some divine arena so let's get right into that okay so on the divine arena we have a tinker okay i don't know what their skills are and we have a uh it's like a druid over here and check out their flavor text over here so don't let the towers destroyed survive for six turns all right and then destroy these towers over here okay sounds like fun uh, i'm gonna have some epic chests as rewards too so even better all right let us check this out now okay so let's take a look at the buildings buildings here gives plus attack to their units spikes uh no skill over here and then these towers over here uh at the start of turn six we'll kill their warlord and then if this tower dies it will kill our warlord so it looks like we'll have to protect this as well as we can uh we will start with actually it's one of these two units i know for sure let's see one two three so this unit gets evasion and then has block for every unit around it so just doing the stats 32 one two three four yeah, this is actually good. We're going to block over here for now. So this unit came into play, has the block, has the evasion, as long as we can keep this alive, and then also block this tower as well, we should be good. All right, they have a unit with high attack. Okay, we'll need to destroy that. All right, we will summon this order unit. And when it comes into play, it deals damage based upon uh, in the line for every order unit on our side of the field. So that's why we're able to kill this as soon as it came into play. Uh, we will summon another unit to destroy this. Summon this unit with evasion here, and then also gives plus health to themselves whenever a melee unit attacks on their side of the field. 
We need to survive to turn six, as you saw in that flavor text over there. So we'll be taking a little bit of damage. The key thing is for us to have these guarded. So we'll do that. All right, we summon this unit because whenever it comes into play, it heals our warlord for a little bit of health. Uh, also, it gives a little bit of health back to our units whenever they, uh, whenever the, our warlord is attacked. So again, we can take the damage over here. Not really concerned. Just need to keep things alive. So we'll do that. We'll summon this unit here. It comes into play. Whoops. It comes into play and it has metal shield. And then whenever an order unit is attacked on our side, it will give block to units around themselves. So that's why we placed it over here. So that way these two units will have block. All right, it, uh, well, we survived until the end of turn five, and then as you saw, their warlord was destroyed. So there you go. So that is the tinker side. Let us do the druid side. So it looks like we have to destroy their towers. And let's go. Okay, uh, so let's look at our buildings. So we have plus attack. And then we have those towers that we'll need to destroy. Otherwise, if we don't, they will destroy us. I think we just need to kill one of them, so we'll do that. Uh, let's take a look at our units. Okay, uh, we'll summon our unit over here. We're going to summon this unit over here. Uh, the reason why we summon this unit is because it steals an extra summon whenever it attacks and we actually placed it over here because if we placed it over here originally it would only summon down to here once we place it out over here it has a chance of actually summoning over here or here all right so now we have to deal with this unit it has evasion and block and it also has double attack as well so that is kind of annoying spike 18 Good work. Yeah, we have our unit with the spikes over here. So what's going to happen is this unit is going to get attacked and then the spikes would actually take care of this unit. Remember, we still need to get rid of their tower as soon as we can. All right, uh, they have this unit came into play, deals damage to a random wounded unit. Uh, this is poison so we just need to deal some more damage over here we're going to be summoning our hmm. yeah we'll we'll summon here for for extra damage over here so as you can see this unit is now poisoned because of this unit's attack and so as long as this poison doesn't get removed we will destroy their uh tower and then should be good here Summon a ranged unit over here. Not really concerned with this unit, it just says block. And we destroy their tower, and then they died instantly. So there you go. Pretty pretty fun divine arena. Just had to, you know, switch our strategies, either defend or attack. Cool. Got some old god. Alright. Okay. So that is done. Uh, divine arena is going to reset in about a day or so, so we'll check back in there. Alright, let us do league. Gonna claim some chests over here. Uh, open up these spots. Right. And we're gonna hold off on opening these chests. Uh, the reason why is because of that world event I had mentioned in the beginning. There is a quest in the world event where you'll need to open up legendary chests. And so that's why we're going to hold off on these. Uh, in the meantime, let me just change our squad. Going back to a uh, different warlord. So we'll change that to the ogre deck that I was talking about. And let me actually... Was there something else I wanted to do? No, the, we're going to keep this here for now. We're going to equip our pet. So we'll make this a little easier for us. Okay, and then we're going to start the league. All right, somebody had mentioned yesterday in the in-game chat 
that they wanted to see us get to League 2. We're currently in League 1 with a rank of 201, so we're actually going to just surrender for a little bit until we can get into League 2, if that is possible. So just, uh, I don't know how many it's going to be. The ranking system is kind of weird. Sometimes it'll go to like 213, sometimes it'll go to like 207, you know, it says 207 there. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how far it goes. So just keep going. And we'll also get to see how much of a difference there is in terms of Warlord health once we get into League 2. If we can get into League 2. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Alright, so 215. <laughs> Could we get to 282? Okay, we're at 282 now, so that's cool. And another 282. Still at 282. As you can see, the Warlord health is getting much lower uh, right now. Still at 282. All right, we'll do this for maybe like another two or three minutes. And if we can't go any further, then uh, we'll just have to keep going on League. I didn't see it's really random uh, <laughs> because we're still facing people with uh, 1100 health you saw a couple of warlords ago it was somebody with 400 health so that is the span that we're dealing with here and it's so rare look at this for it why is their health going up doesn't make any sense And then it goes back down. Just taking a look at the time there, seeing how, how long we've been doing that for. All right. Still trying to surrender out of uh, League One. 340. And then 940. Two ninety. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, yeah, it is getting pretty low, but we're still in League One, apparently. And then fifteens. <laughs> Is it possible? Uh, for those who are uh, tuning in right now, so we did some pit this morning. We also did some divine arena. Uh, we were able to both clear divine arena and also one shot both pit bosses. So we're just waiting for that. Uh, currently, right now, we're doing league, and um, uh, I'm fulfilling a viewer request to see if we can get into league two right now. So we're just doing a lot of surrendering to see if we can actually get into uh, league two. Uh, as you've been seeing, we're with the warlords that we're facing in League One. They have a lot of differences in health. So we saw somebody with about 1,800 health, and then we also saw somebody with 400 health. Excuse me, just notice a little itchy. 300 health over here. Still can't get into League One, so we'll do this for like another minute or so, or and then uh, we'll just continue on with our league. Very, very surprising that we haven't uh, got knocked out yet. Surrender. I am surrendering as hard as I can. Why won't they let me get the League 2? 
It says I'm I'm perpetually stuck in okay, ooh. Fixing somebody in zero place. <laughs> so maybe that might be the sign that uh we're getting close. Ironically, we're facing somebody now who has zero in their name. Yeah. From four hundred to twenty two hundred. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. This goes to show you how random this this game can be. Still surrendering. Although I'm seeing new names that I haven't seen before, and we're seeing warlords with very very low health. And I faced that warlord before. Kind of surprised that we'll see them after all that surrendering. What are, what is my actual rank? I'm so and now we're seeing this guy again. We saw him 15 surrenders ago. All right, we will do 10 more of these and then if we don't get out then we'll just continue with league. So one two Four. This will be number five. Number six. Number seven. All right, this one will be number eight. Number nine. And finally, number 10. All right, are we out? We're still not out. Surprising. All right, I, I've put in enough effort over there, so we're just going to finish up League. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, we're going to be skipping some of these battles here with the high health and the ogres, so... <laughs> Just another surrender over there. Are we here now? Nope, still not. All right. And the matchups are still pretty weird. Because as you saw, we had people that had 400 health, and now we have people with 1,400 health. Makes no sense. And now we're back to someone with 300 health. <laughs> Let's take a look at their skills. So they have Silence, have the Heal with the Warlord, and then the Stones with the Heal. Have a unit over here that deals damage when it dies. We're gonna do our skill over here. We're gonna be placing this over here. Summon this unit because it gives uh, double attack runes and then also it gives metal shield to our buildings or our units. We'll set up for a turn two or turn three lethal if we can. All right, so we'll summon our unit here with the extra splash damage. 
And on the double attack rune, so agency here, got rid of all these units and then attacked again. All right, we'll do our silence to get rid of their skill so that we can attack because they had originally had evasion. Then we'll summon some of this range unit over here. Should be good here for lethal. As an attack boost, and then the double attack allows us to attack there. So we won one battle, and we're now back to 250 after being at 282. So very random in terms of how the uh, rankings go. All right, we're going to... Yeah, we'll skip this one here. I know that some of these Jimmy battles can be kind of random, especially with their units, so we're going to hold off there. Once we lost, we're now back to 282. All right, and now we're facing another Warlord here with low health. So has damage over here for skills. Extra summons and then attack boost over here. Has a unit over here that deals damage to one of our units whenever we attack their warlord. Do this. Summon our unit with the double attack, which attacks behind the buildings, and then attacks and destroys that. They had their unit here with the silence, so that's why this unit can't do double attack anymore, which is unfortunate. We summoned our unit with the, once again, the double attack runes. And as long as at least one of these lanes are open, we, we should have lethal. Or they just surrendered, even better. <laughs> All right, and once again, we're back to 215. All right, once again, we're going to surrender to avoid these Jimmy battles. Back to 282. And now we have somebody with low health again. So I'll take a look at their skills. Got the silence, got the heal, and then the stones. Stones aren't going to matter so much because we're probably going to make it out to turn three. So we're going to do our summon over there. Do our extra attack runes. We have this unit here that gives block to itself and then also gives block to the warlord. So we'll have to get rid of this because it's preventing us from dealing maximum damage. So that is why we can either attack this. Uh, this unit also has reflect damage, but again, we're going to focus more on the damage over here. So we'll do our double attack. Okay, next turn we're going to do our silence to get rid of this unit's skill. I'm going to put this on the uh, attacking rune over here so that we'll get some double attack once again. Alright, so we'll do our silence. Then we'll do the double attacking rune. As you see, we did lose a little bit of attack over here because of that extra block, but our unit down here uh, with the extra boost in attack allowed us to then go for the victory. Okay, claiming the wind chest. Pretty good. Got three more. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can do this one. Uh, this warlord here has this vampire in the first column. Kills all wounded and then the extra summons over here. We're going to do our skill. I'm going to start with this ranged unit down here. Start with this ranged unit because this building gives it protection. And then this unit here also has a couple of skills, has extra attack because of this extra attack over here. And then deals damage to their warlord. All right, uh, unit came into play, negative attack for a turn. Summon this flight unit to block, and then also silence this male unit, which as you can see here, this male symbol. So that's good. Try to keep this unit alive so that we can deal extra damage based on the number of attacks that they do. All right, we're gonna summon our double attack unit to do some double attack.
has the extra attack over here and then deals damage to units behind the line so that's why we're able to attack and then um, destroy that unit all right uh, we have this unit over here that deals damage whenever uh, it dies and then extra attack runes I'm gonna see if okay since okay these units are already wounded so we don't want to we don't care so much about those so we'll actually do our silence then we'll continue on with to make sense we'll summon a ranged units over here we don't want to summon on any of these damage runes because then it will be targeted for destruction whoops misclicked i was trying to summon it over here but this is fine all right so pretty empty board not really too worried about the extra damage and we have enough health so we can take some attacks all right and we're good over here just checking if they have any death triggers they don't this building over here also not so we'll just summon over here and there we go All right, two more. All right, uh, checking out their warlord. Got the silence, got the heal and the stones. You got a pet over here too. That gives a little bit of health to their units. And right, we're actually gonna start with this and we're gonna summon this ranged unit to deal some damage over here. Also have protection behind this building. And then we're summoning it over in this spot because we're going to try and combo with our uh, extra attack unit over here. All right, so like I said, we're going to combo with that extra attack unit. So we're going to be placing it down in the same line over here. When this unit attacks, it'll give it an attack boost. And then this unit here will get the extra attack. So then we'll be able to deal more damage over here. And there you go. <laughs> Surrenders are good. All right, one more. All right, this one shouldn't be so bad either. All right, so we'll do our ranged. We'll do our skill. Uh, taking a look at their, they got the vampire, the kill wounded, and the ranged. We're going to summon. We'll summon this unit over here. So when this unit kills something, it will do these extra summons around them. So we'll get a little bit of extra damage and a little bit of extra board coverage too. Mm, all right so they have their unit over here that gets extra health whenever it kills we're gonna be sil silencing them because they're a million and also has eye health just doing some damage calculation so we got over there there all right we're gonna summon this over here so silence so now their health is no longer that big and then we'll get our extra summon over here All right, so we have this unit over here that has a vulnerability, meaning that we can't deal damage to it uh, with combat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our silence. And then we're gonna continue with summoning this unit over here on this attack rune. And the reason why we summon this unit is because whenever we kill something on our side of the field, we'll get some attack boost. And then this unit here will gain an attack for every order unit that attacks. So this skill here, and then this over here. So now we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we have lethal no matter what, unless they have some way to block all of our lanes. All right, so they have damage over there, damage there, and a turn, but we are good. Just checking for some death triggers, which they don't have, and this one doesn't have either. So we're just gonna skip the turn and let our attack go in. All right, claiming the Winchester over here. All right, could use more of those. Okay, and then we're done for League for now because we have our spots filled up. 
All right, so just a quick recap of what we did this morning. So we did the Dungeon of Trials pit. We defeated the two bosses over here, the Herkoshmar and the Hia Severus using Pirate. Killed them each with one attempt. The next two bosses over here are the Nor Heavenclaw and the Calamity Jane. We're going to be getting attempts every 12 hours, and this will be open in 24 hours, so we should have more attempts ready. Right. We did the Divine Arena, was able to one-shot both of them. Uh, this one here, you need to defend your tower from being destroyed. And then over here, you need to destroy the towers on their side. And then we did some League. As you saw, we are all filled up here. We tried surrendering to get to League 2, and we did that for about, I'd say, roughly five or six minutes, and still couldn't do it. So it doesn't look like you can drop out of League, which is weird. I guess that's good. It prevents some sort of uh, de-ranking. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll check back in tomorrow for some League. And uh, yeah, that is that. Oh yeah, we also had the World Event uh, skill, the World Event notices. So we also checked in with these three units over here. Uh, Send Serp uh, Circuit is a male, sorry, what am I thinking? Female. Uh, female Nature Melee. Uh, the Aphrodite is a ranged order female and then this one here is also a ranged it's a ranged order a range chaos unit so yeah those are the things that we're anticipating so yeah um yeah check back in tomorrow thanks guys for tuning in if you guys have any questions comments feedback or concern leave a message on twitch discord or youtube the content and streaming schedule is right up there in the white box please follow on twitch for the live stream and then like and subscribe on youtube for more videos. We're going to be covering the world event in the next couple days. Also, this live stream will be up there too. And then any other world, uh, sorry, any other Mighty Party stuff that you can think of. Um, if you don't see it there, let me know and then we'll make a video. All right, guys, thank you. And uh, this is Happy Splasher signing off.